Now, let's finally talk about the myelin sheath. Okay, so we mentioned the oligodendrocytes and the Schwann cells were going to produce myelin. Okay, now let's make sure we know what myelin actually is. Okay, so basically you are taking the plasma membrane of each neuron and you are wrapping it around itself. Okay, so you, let me show you a picture. Here we go. Okay, so here's your Schwann cell. Okay, you got the plasma membrane, and we're just gonna jelly roll it, y'all. We're just gonna roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. Boop, 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 boop. All right, so we made our jelly roll. Okay, now let's talk about what our jelly roll is for. Okay, so that's how we make it. We basically just take the plasma membrane of the oligodendrocytes or the Schwann cells, and we just wrap that neuron, okay, that axon of the neuron. Now, why are we doing this? Because it's useful. Okay. It helps with um, generating and conducting the electric current um, that you're going to see in the axon. Okay. And it also helps insulate the axon. Mm. Okay. Now, we are going to have to move ions. Okay, specifically your two favorite ions, sodium and potassium. Okay, but we want them to move um, in a very specific manner. We talked about sodium coming into the cell, potassium going out of the cell. We're familiar with that, but we also are very particular about where we want these ions to move. Okay, so the myelin sheath helps uh, insulate the axon, excuse me, which prevents ion movements um, at the myelin sheath locations themselves. Okay, so ions are going to move somewhere else. Okay. And this one, I probably should underline this, this increases the speed of action potential conduction. Okay. So this little bit of insulation helps us go faster. In fact, myelinated axons can conduct action potentials anywhere between 15 and 20 times faster than unmyelinated axons. Okay. You know that your nervous system already goes pretty quickly. Okay. Myelin helps it go even faster. Okay. So axons within both the central and the peripheral nervous systems are generally longer than the neuroglial cells themselves. Okay, because they've got this big old long axon. Okay. So you're going to have to have multiple cells that are creating the myelin sheath. So each one of these little blue sections, okay, each one of these, so this is a Schwann cell, so this would be um, a neuron in the peripheral nervous system. But each one of these blue sections is a Schwann cell. Okay. And that Schwann cell, again, is wrapping its plasma membrane around the axon. Okay. Now, notice that it's not one continuous wrapping. Okay. You have these little sections. Okay. You have blue sections and you have non-blue sections. Okay. The blue sections, the regions of the axons that are covered by the myelin, these are termed internodes. Okay, so here's our term internode. Okay. So internode, 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 internode. And then the little sections that do not have myelin. Okay. These are called nodes of Ron VA. There's our term nodes of Ron VA. Okay. So any place that has myelin is an internode. Any place that does not have myelin is a node of Ron VA. There it really is a reason why we're saying these words over and over and over. Okay, so this idea of myelinated and non-myelinated sections, we're going to see that come up again. Okay, so just kind of put these terms, file them away in the back of your big old brain. Okay. Now, not every neuron is created equally. Small axons within the central and the peripheral nervous system, they are usually unmyelinated. Okay. If you are an axon that does have myelin, you are termed white matter, okay, because the myelin itself, the lipid component, okay, because there is a lot of lipid component here, 
Um, the lipid component gives it a, a whitish appearance. Okay. If you are a, an axon or a dendrite or a cell body, any of the other parts of a neuron that don't have myelin, okay, you are termed gray matter. So white is for myelin, gray is for unmyelinated regions.